Hecate's wheel, also known as Astrophilos, is absolutely one of the most cherished symbols of her that I connect with deeply. I write about it in all my books. It's central to my teaching. I love the Astrophilos or Hecate's wheel. It's a labyrinth, of course. Although the design that we're most familiar with is modern, the roots of it are in antiquity, coming from sources that referred to Hecate as the whirring wheel. There are existing artifacts that link Hecate to what can be seen as a whirring wheel. So this, the Strophilos, although we are used to this flat image, is actually a sphere that whirs in all directions. And the wheel itself, I think, is a portal to that sphere, that sphere of the greater time, the greater essence of the universe, what's known as Kairos. For me, the Strophilos is so important to me, and I have many, many uh, representations of it here in my space. So this is one of the earliest ones, uh, hand done. And uh, the stain is also a botanical stain. Here is one that actually whirs um, with salt on it. The salt strophilos is something in the Keeping Her Keys book that you can refer to. Also in the Keeping Her Keys read along course, you'll find out more on how to make one of these for yourself. Let's see what else I have in here on the strophilos. So let's go over here. So this is a Strophilos print I had made. This was really easy. I designed the Strophilos that I wanted, uploaded it onto a printing company that does these kind of canvases and ordered one. It's very, very easy. You can do that too. And here is the original, which usually lives somewhere else, but I brought it out to show you. Uh, it's a window that was pulled out of a dumpster with uh, sigils and months. And I really encourage you to see the Strophilos as emblematic of the Wheel of the Year and, you know, choose epithets that make sense in the Keeping Your Keys book. I offer some. Uh, Entering Hecate's Garden has epithets for each of the monographs, so there's 39. And then you can go to the website and you can get the catalog of epithets and also the Hecate's Garden Companion Guide, sorry, um, which will, you can cross-reference the two and make it into a project like I did and continue to do, uh, studying an epithet in conjunction with each calendar month, each moon month, the seasons and sabbats and so on. So that's that one. And then over here, I have this talisman that has um, the moon month cycle of Covina that I made with graphite paper and so on. So that one kind of is the centerpiece of my altar. Now I've got one more thing I want to show. So this is what um, we're working with in Covina for 2024, which we're doing in the new moon salon coming up in a few days. If it's after that, you'll be able to watch the recording. So these templates I designed, so these are the 12 epithets that we associate with a moon month in Covina. They also align with chapters in Entering Hecate's Cave. And also we're making uh, these beautiful padded memo boards as a wall altar that you can set up for each month. Of course, the moon discs are part of the wheel of the year and their cycle, so we made those earlier. So however you connect to Hecate's wheel or the Strophilos, find ways to open up to it. It really, for me, is enchanted and opens me up 
to the mysteries of what is deeper. It's a way to connect to the eminence of Hecate and enjoy this spinning, vibrant motion. If you truly want to attune to its energy, there is a ritual in Lesson 12 in the Keeping Her Keys book. Um, and again, you can find recordings of all of this in places in Covina. That Hecate's Wheel ritual, which is a very embodied ritual, is definitely one that will allow you to step into the force that is Hecate's Wheel. You know, the symbols are emblems and they, they open the door, but this ritual will really have you into that greater mystery of this symbol that is so powerful. Hail to Hecate's Wheel.